Hi everyone, my name is Dmitry and I'll guide you through the process of creating interactive prototypes in mockup. We will start off by creating a simple mobile shop app prototype to get along with the UI and mockup's basic functions. So let's begin. I'll start off by changing the artboard's dimensions to something more mobile like, let's say, 720 pixels by 1280 pixels. Great. Next, I need to create a header. I'll click on the rectangle button and click on my artboard. Here's our little guy. By the way, if you are not into clicking buttons, you can hit R on your keyboard. This will create a rectangle, just like we did before. Now let's change its size to, say, 720 by 100 pixels. Cool, change the color to black. Press the Align Horizontal Centers and Align Top Edges. And here we go, now it's perfectly centered and on top of my artboard. Next, I'm gonna create the logo. I'm gonna click on the text button or hit T on your keyboard. Click on my artboard, this will create a text object. Let me make its bounding box a little bigger, so the text will fit in when I'll crank up the text size. Now I'm going to change the font to Roboto, since it's the default font on my Android device. I'll change the font size to 30 pixels, align the text in the center, and press the Fit to Text Size button to get rid of the empty spaces in the text object. Nice! Next, I want to make two circles for my logo. Once again, click on the rectangle, click on the artboard. Now I will zoom in a little. I'm zooming in and out by holding the Control key or Command key if you are using Mac and scrolling with my mouse wheel. I am navigating by pressing the middle mouse button or you can hold space and click any way you like. Ok, I zoomed in. I'm going to resize the rectangle by holding Shift, Alt and dragging the bounding box. Great, now I'm going to increase the radius. Now I got myself a circle. I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D or Command D if you're using a Mac and move the second circle to the other side of the text object. Now I'm going to click on my circle, holding Shift. I'm going to select the text and the other circle and I'll press Distribute Horizontal Centers button to even out the spaces between those objects. Now I'm going to group them by hitting Ctrl G or Command G and change the colors of the objects to white. Now I'm going to place the logo on my header. To ensure I got it perfectly centered, I will click on my logo group holding down shift and I will click on the header and click on the align horizontal centers and the align vertical centers just to be sure. Cool, we have a nice header with our logo. Now since I'm making a shop app, I need a shopping cart icon. I've got one in the project folder so I'll just hit file, import assets, navigate to my shopping cart icon SVG and click open. Great. Once I've imported the icon, I'm going to resize it the same way I resized the rectangles for my logo by holding Shift, Alt and dragging the object's bounding box. Done. Now I'm going to place it somewhere to the right of my header. Great. Now let's move on. Next thing, we need to import some images for our future slider. I've placed free images in the project folder as well. So File, Import Assets, select our images, click Open. Awesome. Now I'm going to group them by clicking the Ctrl G or Command G and give my group a name, let's say Image Slider. Cool. Now move the group under the header. It should snap when I move the group. Yep. Next, let's create a title for our product. Click on the text button, click somewhere under the images, resize the object's bounding box, change the font to Roboto, change the size to say 35, make it bold and change the text to Edison Gas Lamp. Great. Now I'm going to duplicate the text, move it to the right, change the text to $120 and switch off the bold option. Now let's create a divider. Once again hit the rectangle button, place the rectangle on your artboard. Resize the rectangle by 650 pixels by 3 pixels. Hit the align horizontal centers. Nice, and place it under the name and price text. And change the color to somewhat 
grayish. Great, now let's create our item's description text. Create a text object, resize it a little bigger so we can have more text fit in. Change the font to Roboto, give it a size of 25 pixels and type in the description. If you are lazy, you can copy paste the description text from the project folder. Great, now let's select our divider duplicate it by pressing Ctrl or Command D and moving it down under the description text. Now let's even out the spaces between those objects, holding down Shift I will click on the dividers and the description text and click on the Distribute Vertical Centers button. Now let's make the Add to Cart button. Create a rectangle, place it under the divider, resize it to somewhat 460 by 80 pixels. Change the color to whatever you feel necessary. Add some radius to make the corners more round. Create a text object. Resize the bounding box. Change the font to Roboto. Change the size to 24 pixels. Type in Add to Cart. All caps. Now place the text on the rectangle. Select those two objects and press the Align, Vertical and Horizontal centers. And for more comfortable usage of these objects, let's group them, hitting down the Ctrl or Command G and rename the group to Add to Cart. Done. Now let's make some interactivity. Let's find the Images group that we created earlier. With the group selected, hit the Create Symbol button. In the pop-up, give the symbol a name, let's say slider, hit create, and now we can see that we've created a symbol. You can see that there is a symbol icon beside the object's name. Now double click on it to enter the symbol's editing mode. Now symbols are very powerful objects that allow you to encapsulate multiple states of an object inside itself, rather than creating multiple artboards on your main prototype's view. This will come really handy when you need a lot of objects and interactivity in your prototype. But that's a really big topic that will be covered in later tutorials. For now, just follow my directions. Select the second image and change its coordinates from 0 to 720 on the X axis. And now select the third image from the group and change its X coordinates to 1440. Now we have our images aligned perfectly in a row. Our next step is to click on the group and click on the horizontal drop-down and select Page. This way we are enabled the group's horizontal interaction and setting it to Page we will be able to slide the images to the right and to the left. As you can see now we got ourselves a nice little slider. Great with this done, let's exit the symbols editing menu. We are back on the main prototypes artboard. Let's make the button clickable. Now in order to do that, let's duplicate our entire prototype's artboard by hitting Ctrl D or Command D. Now we have two artboards. Now for a quick recap, an artboard is your prototype's current state. Picture this as a creating a different tab or another page, menu or whatever you need. In our case, we will create a state where user has clicked on the Add to Cart button and we will see that the item was added by creating a notification by our shopping cart over here and changing the button text to item added and change the button's color. So let's do that. Create a rectangle, change its color to orange, give it a radius, resize it and place this little guy beside the shopping cart icon. Now click on your buttons group, double click on it to enter the group, hit the text and change it to item added. Center it out by selecting the text and the buttons rectangle and clicking the align vertical centers. And finally click on the buttons rectangle to change the color to something more lighter. 
Now we have our two artboards that resemble two states of our prototype. The last thing we need to do is to create an action that will switch the artboards. So click on your buttons group. You will notice a little A icon beside the object. By clicking on it, you will get a pop-up with all possible interaction commands available. There are quite a lot of them, but for now you need the click action. Now press and hold the click action and drag this little arrow here to the second artboard. Now go to the second artboard and repeat the process. Press and drag the click action to the first artboard. And that's it! Now by clicking the button you will jump from one artboard to another. As you can see we got ourselves a notification popping up and the button changes and this little slider here is fantastic. That's the end of our little introduction tutorial. I hope you had a great time while working in mocap. Now you are ready to make more complex and exciting prototypes. Don't forget to watch other tutorials and have fun using mocap.